Okay, so we already had one introductory video which talked about EMS testing and um, the lab portion of Platinum Planner. This side is going to talk about opportunities, what that means for clinical opportunities, how to sign up for those, and how to document. Okay, this is also something that we will talk about in person whenever you guys are with us next weekend. Uh, but just to give you an idea of what to expect and introduce you to that system. Okay. So I've logged into a different student's account just so you can see what it would look like from your side here. And you would have the ability to come in and look at opportunities and you would click on available opportunities. Now in the coming weeks, you guys will have a case study or two to document. And that's just simply to introduce you to this documentation process so that we can work out any bugs that there may be or any questions that you may have to get you used to the documentation system before you go to clinical. So that way when you go to clinicals, you already know what you're doing. You're familiar with the system. Everything is copacetic. All right. So if you were signing up for clinicals, uh, then if that uh, portion of time was open, you would see a lot of things available here. You would see a variety of agencies, dates, times. And so we'll talk about that more in person as well, but you really have uh, a lot of things here that you would be signing up for. When we're doing this, which is just going to be a test or example for you, or you're doing a case study, you'll probably only see the one thing there. But understand that if you were signing up for clinicals, there would be a ton of options available here, and you would see what works with your schedule and where you want to go, and you would move over and click on sign up for that opportunity. Okay, so that's what we'll do now. We will click on sign up and it's going to be sign up again. And now it's moved from here and just like it did with the labs, it went from available to my opportunities. Okay, if this was a clinical shift that you were signing up for and it was in the future, it would be listed under your upcoming tab right here until the day of the clinical and then it would move over to ready to document. Now, because this is actually open today, this opportunity for me to be able to show you how it works, it's going to already be listed under ready to document. So you would come over and you would click on begin documentation and it's going to open this page. Now, again, if this was a clinical site, then you would see different op um, information that's listed here. Okay, so when you see and you're signing up for a clinical originally, you might see like this right here would be listed as JCEMS or Johnston County EMS main station. That's because when they give us the uh, dates that they have available, they don't include the station until we submit the student information. And then they say, okay, you have three students that can come on these three days. These are the stations they need to report to and Mark will manually go in and put that information in and it will update. So for a little while, you might just see this as JCEMS main station place that you're signing up for. But then when we update that information, you could come back and look, what is the exact address of the place that you're supposed to report? What exact time are you supposed to be there? Um, who is going to be your preceptor if that person was already assigned? Is there a contact information here of who you need to contact if you need to call out of the shift? All of that would be right here on the overview page. Okay, that's where we're at right now. All right, if we move down to information, then you need to come in and choose your preceptor. And so that's a very important part of the clinical manual, but I'll just discuss it here. One of the very first things that you need to do when you show up for a clinical opportunity is to talk with your preceptor first thing in the morning and ask them, do you have a Platinum Planner account? And if the answer to that is no, then you're going to email Mark with that person's email address and information, name, and phone number so that he can set up their Platinum Planner account while you're there on shift. If you wait until 7 o'clock at night to, to make that contact and realize that they don't have an account, you're not going to get what you need from them. And there's a potential that that uh, opportunity could be rejected because you don't have the preceptor set up. And so please make sure that you're identifying that early on in the day. One of the very first things you're going to have with a conversation you're going to have with that preceptor, okay? If they say yes, they have a, a preceptor account, you would come in and click on this magnifying glass and you would just type in their name. So I use myself for an example. 
And when you put this in, it should narrow it down. Now, when you type my name in, like you will for your case study, you're going to see that two Brittany Bakers come up. Okay. Now, you want to come in and make sure you're choosing the right one. So, this is my preceptor account. Brittany Jackson Baker is who you'll be choosing for your preceptor uh, for your case study. All right. But again, make sure you're choosing the correct person whenever you are selecting their account. Okay, now you don't really have to do anything here. You see that this one, just for an example, was only lasting 10 minutes, but let's say you got off an hour late because you had a late call, you would actually come in and change that shift time so that that additional time would count towards your total of 48 hours of clinical. And then you click save. And then where you're going to spend most of your time documenting under opportunities is under this patient tab right here. And so you would come in and click add patient for every single patient that you come into contact with, okay? So every patient that you come into contact with, you would click Add Patient. So if you only had one today, then you just click it one time. And you can choose what is the patient's gender. So let's say this is a 36-year-old female patient, and she was live. And let's say she had abdominal pain, all right? So those are what it's going to offer you for the drop down boxes. Now, if you remember during the communication and documentation lecture that I filmed for you guys, I mentioned that when you're using a documentation system for your job, it's going to be quite different than what you're doing with Platinum Planner because it's going to give you, when you're in a system like ESO at an organization you work for, give you a lot of drop down boxes and separate pages, pages for vital signs, pages for times, pages for assessment. And it's not like that here in Platinum a planner you see you have very limited boxes that you can choose from and that's why your patient narrative is so important so the narrative would be written here in this box under patient notes and again it needs to be more than one or two sentences all right and I see this every semester somebody will come in and put we picked up the patient we took him to the hospital we went back in service all right literally a two or three second or two or three sentence narrative and that's not acceptable it needs to be written in the correct format which would be utilized one of the approved methods of documentation. So I'm going to jump screens for just a second. Those approved methods of documentation can be found here in your Blackboard course under clinical resources. So clinical resource tab right here. And when you open that up, you'll see the very first thing listed is the approved methods of documentation. Now I don't have the clinical manual posted just yet, but we will have that upcoming for you as well. So you can uh, read up on that prior to going to clinicals, your first shift. But looking at the approved documentation methods, I'll just open this up and you'll see that you have a couple of options. You have the SOAP method, I chart, I cheated, and then what's most popular and really um, prominent in the EMS world is the chronological narrative. So that's my advice to you, but ultimately you can use any of these, but it does have to be one of these four. Okay, so however you choose to write it following one of these outlines is totally up to you. Okay, now the chronological order just basically is like telling a story. So exactly what happened with the patient from start to finish, what time did everything happen, but your choice of which one of these four you want to use. Okay, so you'll use one of those four and you'll type your narrative. So I'll just put you type your narrative here in this section and then you would come down. And you're going to choose any skills that are applicable to you and on this particular patient. Okay, so let's say you did an assessment of adults uh, for this particular patient. You click successful. You did it. it everything went fine. It was successful. Now, she was also a medical patient, so you could choose assessment of medical patients, and that's successful. All right. Let's say something went wrong and this patient needed to be ventilated. Okay, so you choose uh, ventilation, ventilate a patient, but you didn't do it. Your partner, your preceptor did it. It was just observed. Okay, so maybe you did that. Now, one of the most important skills listed here is going to be live patient contact. Now, you notice that up top we chose the live patient in this box. Now, doing that is totally fine. You'll do that for your case study as well as for your clinical patients. But you will only choose this live patient contact from the skill drop-down box when you're at 
clinicals and assessing a truly live patient that's going to count towards one of your required 10, right? Because the Office of EMS says that you need to complete 48 hours of clinicals and in that time period that you come into contact with 10 live patients. And this is how we track that skill. So you would choose live patient contact and choose successful if this was the case. Now, if you choose this for your case study, it's not going to count, right? So I'm going to return it to you and tell you, hey, make sure you go in and remove that skill because this wasn't a live patient to count towards your 10. All right. So you would choose save here. And again, if more, however many more patients that you had, this is uh, you would choose add patient each time. But let's say we just had this one today. We're going to move down from the patient tab down to forms. So we're nearing the end of our clinical shift and it's time for us to get ready to go. I need to give my preceptor uh, and the clinical shift itself as a whole my an evaluation, right? So we want fair feedback on this. That means if you had a negative experience, tell us why you had a negative experience. Certainly I realize that not every preceptor is amazing and fantastic. So if you had a bad day, bad shift, whatever it was, let us know, all right? But uh, just make sure that that feedback is honest and fair. If it is a negative review, then we I promise we will follow up on it. We will get the preceptor side of the story. We'll figure out what happened. Maybe that person doesn't need to be a preceptor for us anymore more. So we will follow up on that feedback. I promise if you put honesty there. But if you had a great shift, tell me that too, because we love to um, acknowledge preceptors who have done a really great job. So you'll fill out those forms. And then you have the documents tab here. So under the documents tab, this is where you would be placing any copies of the paper documentation inside of your clinical manual. So if you had your preceptor sign uh, paper documents, or you use documents, uh, paper documents, to just make notes for your patients and you want to upload those, you can do that as well. Now, you'll be able to upload these uh, through a couple of different ways. You can do it using like a tiny scanner app on your phone or if you have an iPhone and you can scan directly into your notes and create a PDF. Um, but however you choose to scan, you will upload those here. And then when you're ready to submit, you would be able to click on this button here, submit documentation. If you got your preceptor to sign this electronically before you left the shift, then that's fine. But if you did not, as long as you got them to sign the paper and you're uploading that signed paper document to the documents tab, that's fine as well. And then you would just move over and click submit documentation. All right, so again, that documentation does need to be submitted within 24 hours of the end of your shift. And that's not our rule. That's a rule from the North Carolina Office of EMS saying that you need to submit documentation within 24 hours of completion of a shift. Now, most businesses, most employers are going to require that you complete that documentation before the end of your shift. Like you can't go home until it's done. But for students, you do have 24 hours. My advice to you would be to go ahead and write this documentation while you're there with your preceptor, while they're writing their documentation so that you can ask them any questions or they can give you advice on how to write it. But that is your choice. If you choose to go home after your shift and write it, that's okay too. Uh, but do make sure that it is submitted within 24 hours of the end of the shift. Okay. So we click on submit documentation. And then again, it's gone. So it would be listed under the submitted tab. If I approve it, it would be under approved. If I return it to you for corrections, you would click on returned. And just like with the labs, if I did return it to you, you would go to your home page of Platinum Planner and you would see a yellow box listed here. So again, right here you see uh, that this is just where she signed up for it. But if I returned it, you would be able to click on it and see what I said needed to be corrected. Okay, so we'll talk more about this while we're in person. This is just to introduce you to the system and give you some idea as far as what to expect with Platinum Planner. And so hopefully this was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me and we will be getting more used to this as we get ready to do that first case study coming up over the next couple of weeks. All right.